everyone, it's Julia. I found this little sampler at an antique mall and I just had to pick it up. It says, Dear house, you're really very small, just big enough for love, that's all. And I live in a very small home and we just love it. And so I thought, yeah, this was just very fitting. But I want to turn it into a, a wall hanging. And so I picked out a couple fabrics that I thought not only um, matched, but it also, they also have that vintage look to them. Now I really enjoy the fringe that it's going around this. I believe this is on a linen and I don't want to um, take those that fringe off. And so I'm just going to lay this on top of this base fabric, this green fabric. And then I put, I created the orange um, borders around that. And you can see it there. And I just put some green corners on, on there. Some really simple. And now I'm making my sandwich. I layered that on the top. I have my batting underneath, but then I also have my backing, and I did use the green for my backing. So I have my three layers. Now, once that's on there straight, I'm going to just stitch around, and I'm using two parallel stitches to get that on. And then I also stitched in the ditch. I really wanted to share with you how I face a quilt versus binding, and I'm, so I'm going to face this instead of binding it. To start with, I, I cut five or four five inch squares and folded them. So the raw edges are lined up with the raw edges of my quilt. And I'm just gonna put my clips in. And then the other part of the facing are these strips that are three inches wide and I folded them. And they're, they're cut two inches short of the, the the top and so you can see a little bit of the green is showing that's what you want you don't want to go completely into the corners and again I'm just going to put some pin some clips in there I'm going to do the same to the bottom just getting those corners in there on on top and just doing my clips It's important when you do this to remember to put the triangles or the corners down first. I have made a mistake before and did it the opposite and you don't want to do that. The strips need to be on top. And again for the side, I just measured the side and cut that strip two inches shorter. So about a pro approximately an inch will, be, will show in the corners. Again, you don't want that to go all the way into the corner. Now, once all my clips are on, I'm gonna take this to my sewing machine and I'm gonna stitch it about a quarter of an inch. And then I'm gonna do my, just a little bit of trimming in the corners. Just taking that little bit off once all my stitching is done. And then it's just a matter of turning this. And just look how cool that is. I mean, just have this perfect little corner. And now the most, probably the mo one of the most time consuming parts about this is you do want to make sure this is pressed really well. I'm just going to take it and just roll my seams and then I'm going to, um, really press that well just taking my my pokey tool just making sure i get that all of those corners poked out and you can see what the back looks like and just rolling it and then we'll be pressing And then I put a, t a, a lot of clips in. You want to make sure it's held really well. And I also made sure that that facing is rolled a little bit to the back so none of it shows on the front. And then back to my sewing machine. And this time I sewed from the front about a half inch away from the edge all the way around all done 
and it just has a really nice look to it. And then I wanted to share with you, it has automatic hangers on the back. Those little corners, you can easily just slip a dowel and, and hang it with that. Now my dowel isn't, I don't have one long enough. I have to make a trip to the craft show, craft store, but it, you can tell that it's just gonna be, it's just an automatic hanger. I wanted to add just a little bit something to the corners. And so I decided on some yo-yos. I have my circles cut at approximately three inches, which is gonna give me an inch and a half yo-yo. And I'm just folding that edge down and just doing a running stitch all the way around to create these little yo-yos. I know many of you have made yo-yos, but I'm surprised that a lot of people don't know how to make them. So I just wanted to share that with you. Once you're all the way around, you just flip it and, and pull it tight. Use strong thread or else double your thread when you're doing these. I'm just going to take a little back stitch to tie it. And then I'm going to bring my thread through to the back. And then I went ahead and did all four, for one for each corner. And then I have these really cute little little do crochet doilies and they don't all match but I thought they would be really fun in the corner they have a vintage vintage look to them and I like the color behind these yo-yos so I'm just gonna take this probably hand stitch these on when watching it watching TV tonight and that is this week's project I hope you have a chance to try this method um, it's wonderful and especially in a modern quilt where you don't really want that frame that that binding sometimes creates it'll have just a real smooth look you can see it there i did show, share some pictures here i hope you have a chance to create this week bye for now